so this uh, this cannot be done because there is a lack of transparency and we don't trust our systems we don't trust relationships and of course so what i was mentioning was that this uh, uh, this approach or redundancy in um, in building tech in silos is is not uh, uh, is not very efficient it's a redundant way of building technology and of course open source has shown us uh, ways to build technology and share but this is uh, not what is the the way of large tech companies so large tech companies are building some tech there's open source tech but there is no midway where we can actually tie it all up into one unique value chain or or multiple value chains so you know so this is uh, this is the aim of building a tech tokenized environment now now one may ask that how much tech do we need to build in the first place now this is not a question that uh, the technology companies may want to answer you know like we are a, a, in a tech economy and uh, and uh, it's always need for more tech but but somewhere this tech has become so consumable and and it is uh, it's creating addiction and it is and there's no no fair level or a balance because when we build something create something there's always a there's always an imbalance that can be created you know and uh, and this is where the, the the this is where such questions are very important how much tech we need to build in the first place tech tokenization i believe is a mechanism that is available today and can can be adopted today of course we are building our uh, tech tokenized mechanism or collaborative mechanism but but it is not just about us it's about the industry that has to uh, to look into this direction where they start uh, building tech which allows for collaboration and and allows for for sharing rewards um so this and we also know that that today's tech is uh, is not just solutions it's also problems and there are a lot of problems you know how many iPhones can we really give to the world, and how many iMacs Pro? I know I'm a proud, uh, uh, you know, Apple user, but again, the questioning that how many phones do I need to buy, or and how many, you know, technology solutions I need to buy. So this this solution and problem, and of course, from a market point of view, how big can a company become? It okay, it became a trillion dollar, you know, it can become ten trillion dollar, but but what is the balance? and what is the problem that comes and of course from being from a financial background i understand cycles and i uh, you know understand how we move uh, you know, uh, 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 from uh, you know big exuberance uh, to being careful about our resources and and uh, and uh, and we also understand that how bankruptcies happen and and how nothing lasts uh, you know forever and and of course there could be a crash like scenario where where suddenly the need for iphone becomes small and or need for uh, you know gadgets you know suddenly fall off the cliff and again that point of time we need to think uh, uh, more than a social reason how are we going to uh, to move into this new world how are uh, you know how are we going to handle bankruptcies and even if crisis and and chaos doesn't happen and even if we are in a constant path of evolution which is uh, which continues for another 10 years we still have to find a, a more efficient way of of working because there's a uh, the cost can reduce further and we can actually build uh, uh, build solutions that actually are more meaningful and are are clustering around value right so and of course more than that we want to Uh, we want to uh, uh, to nurture innovation so we want to bring bring value creators in or people with ideas or institution uh, you know with innovations should lead the the next stage so this is these uh, these are uh, might all look very uh, uh, you know lofty ideas but as you will see later how i build this into a real solution and uh, and so uh, so i don't want to go more detail about inefficiency but you know that that uh, there is so much technology we sell and and so much it costs to build it and then uh, uh, there are so many acquisitions that happen on tech 
uh, you know technology has its large inefficiency like any other sector when uh, 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 when a car manufacturer may buy another car uh, you know manufacturer and we know mergers and acquisitions about 80% of them really don't deliver and so so there is uh, a reality that uh, that is there which is that big tech is not efficient and so so what do we do how do we build this new tests uh, you know trust system how do we build this new tech tokenized environment how do we push the society towards innovation how do we push it towards value we have to of course build trust systems and blockchain as you know is a trust system of course it went ori uh, towards cryptocurrency and and uh, uh, and we know that uh, 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 you know that the society is intrinsically uh, very speculative we want to make money uh, you know money and wealth today and and this is not very positive for you know for the core technology that is that is intrinsically a trust system but again we are at the very er early stage of uh, you know of experimenting with trust systems and the more we experiment with it the more uh, you know you know stronger and robust they will be and the more we can rely on them and and this is a this is a stage of building trust systems right and so we need to understand how does how does one build trust systems how should the society build trust systems how should we uh, uh, should we nurture such trust systems you know then this is where where the idea of uh, uh, you know of diego gambetta comes into place and diego gambetta was an italian and a social scientist and and he uh, you know talked about inscrutable markets and he talks about rep, you know reputation he talks about about mafia that that if there is a, a mafia threat how should we judge it whether whether the victim is going to be killed whether, whether he should pay so the uh, so the whole idea about uh, 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 in about asymmetry in information how uh, you know judging information is very subjective how it is hard to give uh, uh, to give accountability to information you know in other words he's talking about a marketing world where there is so much marketing budget that you are far away from what is the real value of the technology that you buy right so so this is where we are living in we are living in a in an inscrutable market which is very difficult uh, uh, to uh, to understand decipher to understand where does the value sit what is the cost of that value how should we uh, should we nurture that value it's a, uh, so the whole idea is is about is about understanding that information by very nature is asymmetric and technology that's built on information around an information information age is asymmetric and we need a dramatic jump to move to the next stage we cannot just say okay you know let's uh, uh break the big tech and and build something new or or build a, you know and we are just going to start collaborating tomorrow it needs a it needs a real change and of course uh you cannot really stop uh, stop an idea whose time has come and and we know that we have moved from web 1.0 to 2.0 and we have seen the big social media uh, social media buzz and and google was uh, uh you know the first stage where we, uh, where the whole information was cataloged and and now we are talking about we are not really talking about 3.0 but but all this data systems talking to e each other and uh, uh, you know Siri and all voice agents uh, going and accumulating information and getting your answer is somewhere we are moving into uh, a data uh, uh, data learning environment we are talking about about you know cognitive web we're talking about databases talking so what is the next stage after the web 3.0 web 3.0 beyond 3.0 comes 4.0 and 4.0 is intelligence so when we talk about intelligence which is a natural shift from learning databases or or connected databases we are talking about beyond information age when we talk about beyond information age we are no more bothered by accountability in information because intelligence becomes the new commodity or the new service 
tech becomes the old commodity or the commoditized service so so it's an it's a natural progression and uh, which is where uh, uh, you know looking at uh, you know gambetta's work of inscrutable market it's a it's a beautiful paper i suggest that you go through it it's uh, you can find four five six pages brief on the web so so the point here is that that we are living a cycle of commoditization and if if chips and uh, got commoditized and if if internet is something which we don't say thank you uh, you know to internet and it is something which is running foundationally technology of today will run foundationally and if it's going to run foundationally it will get commoditized if it will get commoditized it will not be the cream of the value the value will shift to intelligence and so we need to think okay if intelligence is coming and tech is going to uh, you know to be commoditized and the best solution for microsoft or apple or or uh, facebook or or uh, you know oracle or or uh, you know all these big companies would be to build this foundation together so that their technology has a reuse that is a collaborative environment we need to build of course microsoft buying github is it uh, shows us uh, you know a sign in the direction and there are a lot of uh, mix and match of uh, of open source technologies which are happening you know gitlab is an example which is which is uh, which is some which is some technology which can be used so there are a lot of collaborative technologies coming but again what i am talking about here what we are talking about here is a is a reward mechanism because that is what kind of gels these pieces into one unified uh, structure mechanism um and uh, so uh, so so the point so the point here on the slide is that yes the tech of today will get commoditized you will not see uh services of technology getting value premium you will get in uh, uh services of intelligence getting value premium whether that uh, whether these companies will trade in ipos i don't think so i think the markets the way we know it will also change and markets will shift in value because value always shifts so new york stock exchange may not be the 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 exchange because as you know ipos are peaking and they're going down and and uh, high frequency traders are still thinking that they can get an edge by planting towers next to the you know the cme data center and and so on and so forth but the but the future is going to be design future is going to be tech design it's going to be uh, going to be collaborative design right and and uh, and when we talk about sh sharing that re uh, reward if we can talk about intelligence then sharing the reward or building a pricing mechanism to share that reward is an easy uh, you know problem to have or or a good problem to have Uh, but i don't believe that pricing is going to be the challenge it is it is uh, clustering the society around intelligent value that's going to be more important so this is where alpha blocks vision comes in and uh, alpha block is a marketplace of intelligent systems it's a marketplace for a tech tokenized environment it's a marketplace for validation of information and it has it is a market it's a place for market participants where people can bring their data people uh, can bring their service which maintains the data there can be processors of data there can be uh, users of data alpha generators of data what is our core business while we are building this tech our core business is uh, is about building automated smart beta port portfolios we build low frequency portfolios for asset managers whether it's for family funds or it's for hedge funds or it's for you know uh, wealth managers private wealth or it is for uh, uh, you know for endowments we build low frequency automated uh, solutions portfolio solutions and our our technology is uh, is uh, uh, you know geo agnostic we build for india we build for uh, for israel we build for europe canada us so so this is this is what we call general ai 
uh, and um, so this is our business and we had a challenge in our business because because the like the tech is working in silos uh, 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 the uh, you know this investment management industry is also working in silos there's compliance there's control there is a need for getting to a certain size after which uh, you can license and so on and so forth so there was a lot of gatekeepers that are there and it is it's not an easy industry to say okay you have got a smart idea you should get a billion dollar to manage and or license to so it's not that easy and so we have to go a roundabout way to build a technology that could prove that our our process was systematic scientific replicable our process was validated and and this validation mechanism around an algorithmic process is how this tech tokenized idea was born out of it that uh, that that you know i need to only focus on the ai i need to take my 2 million line of codes and give it to the world because i want to show them how they can build and maintain pieces of it while i focus on the core process that's the uh, that's the ai i don't want to build the technology anymore so this realization that you could actually give away your tech show how the tech is working show how it is modular and allow stakeholders to step in and say yes we want to help you yes we want to be a part of your re- you know reward mechanism yes we like this idea we understand it so this is the uh, the vision from where we are coming uh, so um so what i'm so so now that we have built on to the idea of um, of a marketplace in where market participants can contribute collaborate share in a value chain we have to understand the value chain what's the value chain here the value chain is as i said clustered around intelligence or clustered around tangible measurable dynamic value and as a financial industry uh, case we can we call it as alpha alpha is intelligence in a financial portfolio or something that is coming from skill of the asset manager rather than the market itself because market also creates returns anything above the market is the intelligence uh, which is alpha and now this intelligence in a in a tech sense or an ai sense is created by the algorithm which creates additional returns than what the market produces and that's called alpha so alpha is sitting in the center and it is sandwiched between services that cater around alpha and of course data now data is also a service and uh i believe that that after the um technology tokenization or parallelly or along with technology tokenization which will get relegated or should get relegated to building this infrastructure which the society will use even data will get relegated to the to this infrastructure so data as we know as the premium uh, value is going to change in an intelligent environment because intelligent environment also under takes care of privacy takes care of and it is cross domain cross function cross asset so it is so data as we think or understand as a concern will not be a concern tomorrow so it will be just another service where you will be plugging in your data and and bots will be extracting intelligence from the data and service providers working around it so uh, so the first question is how is it different from ai economy i guess that the second question is how is it different from open data initiative and the third is how to avoid how do you avoid duplication so if you can answer the first one how is this different from the api economy 
Yeah, so this is uh, the API economy is about access. And what I'm speaking about uh, here is about connecting into a value chain from the starting point to the end point. End point is where the consumer is. Starting point is the data. And then there are data processing, data boards, maintenance boards. It's a whole value chain of building intelligence, which is, which is measurable which is not uh, something uh, which is a which is not a piecemeal service which actually is an ongoing service which which has a purpose like for example a financial portfolio or a smart beta portfolio has a purpose to beat the market that's a purpose and uh, an api economy may be a contributor to that purpose so we are talking about uh, intelligent assets and uh, which is uh, which are built over the api economy if that answers the question the um, second question was about open open data initiative open data initiative also is a step in the right direction and uh, but again as you know that there is um, a the, the there are domains like cyber security and cyber security is where um, the uh, 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 the uh, the ones creating those attacks or hackers are the one who are collaborating more than the companies who are under threat so the reason the companies are under threat are not collaborating is because they don't have a mechanism to share intelligence so so that is why the open data initiative is a, is one step there are many steps that we need to make and structure where sharing of data and sharing of intelligence and collaborating is easier in a mechanism. So that is the answer to the second question. And, and third is about duplication. Uh, that's a, that is something which is very interesting actually because how do we avoid duplication? The markets have a very, or markets or nature as we may say is, is uh, is very intelligent it has its way of of um, of taking the best out of of the resources and it has a way of expunging or throwing out the rotten so so this is also a system or a mechanism where technologies will compete and invariably the ones which are more vibrant will stay and the or will 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 continue and the ones which are which are not relevant will uh, will fall uh, fall off you know so so it's like it's like a, a functioning of a nature where uh, where duplication like for example there are so much so much content there but on the web and not everybody gets those, those similar kind of it so you know there is a there's of course a marketing mechanism behind it but but there is there's that is not a level playing playing competition because people are uh, you know are gaming the system we like to game the indexing on google we like to do uh, to find a smarter way to be on the first page and so on and so forth so it's not a level playing field and if we build a level playing field where there is a real competition uh, uh, which is not connected to size which is connected to uh, to real intelligence systems then naturally uh, 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 there will be a part of those processes which will prevail, and that is how the system will, exp uh, you know, expunge something which is not relevant or something which is not working, and and those processes will have another chance to reboot and come again and compete again. So it's a it's a refreshing system which will naturally take care of duplication, or or not duplication per se in terms of it's not just one process versus the other it's many good processes versus uh, versus average processes you know so that is how the system works at a at a at a you know aggregate level there is one more question uh, so do you think that there is a bigger economy for permissioned blockchains like hyper ledger businesses or uh, do you think that is uh, is skewed more toward 
the permissionless blockchains like Ethereum, who is winning the economy, uh, the economic war? Yeah, so this is a question for me to anticipate, and I, though I have a background from forecasting, but I've stopped anticipating because I think it's a vain exercise to anticipate markets. is very difficult to judge how the who will be the second mover who will come and kill the first mover, right? So what I am talking about here is uh, connecting uh, or building an ecosystem where. Uh, where there is a where there is uh, something more than interoperability, and which I'll explain as we go ahead in the slide. So it's a system sitting above interoperable system because because ultimately you can build an interoperable infrastructure, but still you need to build use cases, you need to build businesses, you build, need to rev, you know you know create revenue, you need to bring the legacy economy on this infrastructure, and that is not there today. How do you bring the legacy world to uh, uh, to this interoperable uh, new technology? This GPTs, the the way you bring it is you bring it because if there is intelligence, there is value, and value is naturally going to pull uh, the community because it's a natural puller. Because if you give something a value, if I show you. There is a gold mine. We, you know, people will, uh, if they, uh, you know, realize that yes, there is some resource. People rush. The whole idea about rushing to value is a natural instinct. So, I cannot really say what who is going to win. But what what I can tell you is that that we are living Web 3.0. 4.0 is intelligence. The world will organize itself around intelligence. So, if Ethereum is going to have a more intelligence based use cases they will win the uh, war if or at least i believe uh, everybody has a chance to win because somebody else who's non ethereum can build something better and then fight with ethereum so again this is a natural ecosystem where it is not one winner for the lifetime and then we have ethereum and then ethereum till the time we'll die and then there'll be only ethereum you know right this, this is all wishful thinking but again the uh, something which is very constant is change and it is going to be very exciting that's what i can tell you okay thank you so the um, so this is an idealized structure of services around intelligence and the small boxes are validated service and validated alpha and validated data there is a need for validation of data because the content validation or data validation is how you can build intelligence how can you compare my intelligence with your intelligence if we can only compare it when we have a same reference and that reference is the data so the data has to be validated the data has to be written in the block the data has to be written on a decentralized database where it can be you know accessed and and intelligence can be built on it similarly we need services which are not just run of the mill validated services services with reputation services with a score so they have to be also validated so this is how intelligent intelligence or technology can be tokenized around intelligence now as we move ahead we see that that once that data itself is a service and can be consumed once you uh, tokenize it or once you validate it or once you reference it or once you write it on the smart contract and after the data comes the the uh, the open intelligence because there's a lot of intelligence out there which is open uh, we are not aware of that open intelligence because there's no mechanism to uh, to bring it all in one marketplace that is one of the missions that we have to bring open intelligence on the marketplace so anybody can use it and say oh wow i didn't know that that this is available for free and it is open and it is there's no ip and this is accessible for the world we want to give some of our uh, you know intelligence processes out for free as we go to the next versioning versioning to next stage we want to give our processes out as a uh, as a uh, you know as an open ip so so data is a 
consumable service once you put it as a reference and data with open intelligence is a service and when you have data and open intelligence you can also add an intelligence that is protected as a service because protected intelligence is also something the world wants to consume we have some intelligence we want to give it to the world but if everybody wants it free then i have no business of building that intelligence i want to share that intelligence in a secure environment and i want to you know build a business around it so i have to find a way to distribute it and that distribution i can do through alpha block through this tech tokenized environment and the best way for that intelligence to be judged is that it is comparing with the open intelligence it's comparing itself with the same reference data so reference data open intelligence and uh, and uh, you know proprietary intelligence all are in a sequence of value chain and so this is how a value chain can be built now instead of looking at financial markets we can look look at cyber security uh, so instead of cyber security we can uh, can look at weather we can look at voice agents we can look at uh, you know anything you you believe is is valuable to you there is a stakeholder out there who wants to provide you that value so that is how value chains get built and when you are there as a consumer and there is Uh, uh, there's an intelligence service providers come and say we want to help we want to help we want to build your foundation we want to create this value chain for you because we love this idea so this is how a process flow can be built which is nothing but a database adding layers of processes services to e- to itself and it is written on the decentralized database so it's always open to to the public to scrutiny what's not open or accessible is the ip what is accessible is everything else and that is how we move from data to data processing dp we put an intelligence score ranking on the data we build portfolios on that and what comes out of the portfolio is what to buy how much to buy how long to buy so a portfolio is nothing but a function of the selections weights and duration that this is how we generalize the asset management industry where we are saying what is asset management asset management is is about knowing what to buy how much to buy how long to hold selection weightage duration generalize now this can be generalized for any data set because cyber security is also about where are you going to get hit how you know how important is that variable how long that variable is uh, is going uh, is going to influence you so intelligence is is somewhere can be seen in a generalization it can have many generalization but for us or what we bringing here is a portfolio generalization which is that how is our cyber security intelligence better then what is available in open ip or what is uh, available today to the company under threat so this is a data flow now comes the uh, comes a re, uh, you know reward mechanism now reward mechanism for us this was um this was a this was this is our design or this this is our contribution to the world and this is what we are launching and we always thought about it and uh, i don't know how many of you have read uh, the white paper on our website uh, we are going to come up with a new web uh, website soon which will have more white papers but this the current website has a paper um on the vision called uh, called alpha blog and it talks there about smart contracts and it says that that smart contracts is again a piece of logic which is sitting on the blockchain and it is not really uh, you know really being used and the reason it is not being used is because the smart contract design which was uh, done by sabo nick sabo back in um, uh, early 2000 because the smart contract predates the blockchain and that time he said that design of a smart contract is a function of 
various factors it's a function of of budget it's a function of preference it's a function of uh, you know pricing uh, price it's a function of pricing model and so on so so the the everything was good about the intelligence smart contract but the pricing model which was not articulated till now is where we can come in and change the smart contract into an asset class we can because if we can price a smart contract and we can load intelligence logs into it we naturally are converting a static value to a dynamic value because i just explain how data is into a reference and intelligence comes gets extracted from it and so it's a portfolio portfolio is changing every time the data is being put into it so so if we are able to do all these steps we are giving the smart contract a dynamic value every time it changes the portfolio is changing it's going up it's going down and when it's going up and down it's basically uh, proving that is it beating the market or is it not beating, uh, beating the market is it creating alpha or it is not creating alpha is it intelligent or it is dumb so when we do that suddenly the smart contract becomes a dynamic time series and it becomes a place for feedback feedback because it is always feeding back it uh, people are coming they want to use it they say oh, that i want to build on it i like it i want to merge it with another smart contract so suddenly smart contract becomes a, like a stock price uh, and people want to buy the one smart contract another one it becomes a portfolio of smart con uh, contract and when that happens there's so much feedback happening that suddenly the rigid blockchain which has a problem to scale starts to scale it starts to grow because there is the smart contract everybody is writing a smart contract everybody is building an asset everybody wants to contribute to an asset so this is how intelligent smart contract which is just a a record of logs of interaction between technology microservices which are connected in an api economy changes the whole system because it becomes an asset class and this is what we call alternative asset classes suddenly you bring your data we build the asset somebody else brings his data somebody else builds a, builds an asset because the data is private the data is secure the data is referenced the data is tied in the value chain of where is it going and what is it producing and did it do a good job or a bad job so this is where the hack was and when the or hack maybe i'm talking in a in a philosophical term here in terms of hacking of a design redesigning new design so suddenly intelligence sits between all data sets and all services services and data interact around alpha and that is how it will become complex it becomes reusable it becomes replicable what is the pro problem of science today the problem of science is that it is it is not replicable 70% of research papers scientific research papers cannot be reproduced so if scientific papers have a challenge of replicability what are we talking about a non academic world we're talking about a fraud we're talking about a non ethical tech we're talking about question that we will ask 20 years from now that why did they not do this why were they you know why the world like now we uh, you know so the so the whole idea of perception might change you know of course this is this is a i'm trying to showcase my vision here our vi uh, vision here as a business but i'm but what i'm trying to say that that, that tomorrow is going to be very different and tomorrow either we have a choice to build it today or somebody else will build it you know so at least we want to build it and because it is it's relevant for us and if it is relevant for us and if for our, our stakeholders it could be relevant for you so this is what is uh, is how it builds up into a complete cognitive web because what is web 3.0 web 3.0 is machines talking to each other databases they're going to databases extracting it extrapolating it 
manipulating it and how manipulating in the right word in terms of extracting the science out of them and then it becomes a data map that is what we uh, we call the you know you know borges map and the map is as big as the country and and the and the whole idea of of uh, everything connected you know, which is not today it's not connected we are we are in very fragmented world why is google finance only for canada why is google finance only for us why is there there's only one not one google finance google finance why is there it is called finance it should be only a search engine which has everything alpha block search engine you can search anything which can be data fired you can search any data set you can search open data initiatives which are reference you can search intelligence on them you can uh, look for service providers you have your data you want a service provider it's a marketplace so this is how a map gets built and once a map gets built and the smart contracts start to thrive secondary market gets created primary markets get created it's a new marketplace and there's feedback and that is when first mover come in then second mover is nobody knows about it and it comes and challenges the first mover nodes grow and decay you know i don't know how many of you are uh, from a mathematical background but the idea of first mover or rich get richer and all these things are mathematical and are at, at the heart of complexity right so so this is how we build and this is how we uh, allow technology companies to work with us this is how we allow uh asset managers to work with us this is how we allow we will allow uh we will build solutions for investors who ultimately will benefit or consumers or users who will be getting a lot of value for in terms of intelligence which we don't have today because if it were if the society was intelligent then we would not have a challenge of beating the s&p 500 s&p 500 over a 30 year period asset managers of the world which manage 65 trillion dollars don't beat the s&p 500 net of costs how strange is that if the smartest of people cannot beat a basket which is dumb and built in 1850s and it's open mathematics that means we have to build intelligence which can do a better job than what is being done and that is why we have to facilitate those processes that's why we have to help in decision support that is why we have to say there is a new way and this is where listing comes in listing of intelligent solutions validating those solutions distributing those solutions right so so i so this is broadly the idea we we can pause here to take some questions and then i can conclude so the question is so does that mean that alpha block is not against decentralization alpha block aspires to be aspires to be the world's first decentralized organization we are building technology for the world you know and that is the whole idea to um use such technologies to marry the blockchain to the web when we can marry the blockchain to the web then internet becomes a marketplace different than what it is today because today marketplaces are sitting on the internet internet is not the marketplace but when you marry the blockchain which is a ledger accountability trust validation listing to the internet then it becomes a sir a place for intelligent services a marketplace for intelligence and that is how alpha block wants to lead the web 4.0 vision we are building the intelligent web which is for you for everybody and that's why it's decentralized All right. So we have our next question that just came in. And the question is how do you manage scaling and security with so many points of attack from the web? Okay, that's a great question. Um the our alpha process as I said 
is is not sitting on the smart contract that is where we actually go to in terms of a zero knowledge environment so what does a zero knowledge environment do it, this is a this is little he heavy for uh, now at this stage of the of the webinar but i'll still explain it in in brief in brief in a in a brief way a um, zero knowledge environment is to prove that you have the intelligence but you don't give away the intelligence so when i'm only proving intelligence the purpose of hacking or the meaning of hacking is to get the intelligence with everything is out there for scrutiny the motive for hacking is not there moreover there are there are double layers that we have put into here which means that there are double validation that we that we incur and um, and be, uh, before i go into double validation maybe i should also explain that that we are converting the idea of a transaction that is a pillar of the in in the blockchain tech transaction we are saying that transaction is a subset of a predictive transaction so when you add anticipation to a transaction you are calling you it becomes a predictive transaction this i have explained in the paper so predictive transaction means transaction with a zero one binary result whether what anticipation you are going to do is positive or is negative so when you create a predictive transaction you don't have to to write blocks all the time you have to propagate that transaction so you are propagating that transaction it is or it is it is propagating itself and it is publishing results and then when the transaction somebody say oh this is interesting i want to use it or i want to contribute it or i want to uh, 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 you know validate it that is when a, a block is written again so we are writing purposeful blocks on the process which are which are which really don't care about the or which are agnostic to verifiers dilemma so the whole idea the how design uh, the cryptographic de uh, design is in the 51% consensus attack this is a different kind of consensus we are building there which we are going to art articulate but again uh, the logic and design is different and the kind of attack we are talking about is is going to be different than in a conventional blockchain environment where the uh, there is something there is crypto to be stolen we are also working in a um in a in a in a uh, crypto agnostic environment in terms we are we will be utility tokens and in a in a true sense where you are utility where we are making it redundant to hold on to the token to look at a profit from the token it will be married to utility which if it is there is value there is utility if there is no value there is no utility so why will you want to hack it and steal it when it is it is uh, it may have utility today and may not have it tomorrow right so so maybe i i gave a long answer to that question but i thought that may give an answer Okay, so actually that question brought a couple more questions. So uh, the next question is: So I'm still not sure about decentralization. How do you uh, list and validate on alpha blocks, uh, on alpha block, and then I talk about decentralization? Yeah, a bit, bit, uh, before I talk about that, I think I missed out the scaling question. Uh, so. how do we scale uh i think maybe i answered this in before in terms of that that the society is going to move towards value when i am creating we are creating a system of of competition of intelligent processes we are sticking out our neck we are saying okay this is our process this is how the uh, how we are approving it and anybody can come at compete with it when you create an open environment like this where we are talking about a, a domain agnostic solutions we are already talking about 
a lot of community uh, interest and when we talk about and and we are not also talking about expensive block writing we're talking about transaction processes we're talking about the uh, 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 validation system so this is where we believe that uh, uh, that we may have um, we may not have those conventional scaling challenges but we'll still have it they'll this is a blue ocean strategy right so we will have to think out of the box how to scale but uh, but whatever scaling challenges are today the uh, in terms of the blockchain tech are different in our case so that was a scaling thing so the other question was how are we going to build a decentralized organization uh, so the stakeholders you are the stakeholders if you are the stakeholders which means you have access to the technology and you have access to the intelligence and you have access to uh, uh, the dynamic uh, intelligence because the intelligence you today you consume you can consume tomorrow or you consume in 15 minutes and you consume every 15 minutes so we are already giving you a tech that you don't have and so if you have access to it and if you can of course it's a there is a cost of the technology there is a there's a cost of infrastructure and and that infrastructure has to be sustained so we are not expecting users to sustain it we are expecting technology companies to sustain it for you so maybe that answers the decentralized part uh there is uh, one more uh question um so is this uh a snapshot validation consensus then uh, we call it proof of intelligence because validation is a service and intelligence is at the core if there is no intelligence validation is not required if there is intelligence validation comes in so so it's called proof of intelligence or proof of alpha right and for us alpha is generic alpha is in your personal data you have so much per personal data are you getting that intelligence on that data no are you getting monetization on that data no would you like to have intelligence on your data yes would you like to have smart agents helping you with your day to day decision making process we know how error prone the human decision making process is if we are willing to give our cars to driverless agents but we and so if we are doing that that means we are going to give our data to smart agents the future is going to be a lot different than what we see today i hope okay. i answered that question i don't see any further questions so i think uh, uh, we have 20 minutes uh, left uh, to the end of the of the webinar so uh, we'll we'll uh, continue the presentation for about 15 minutes more and then we'll see uh, we'll take 5 minutes to to answer the rest of the questions and to end the the, the webinar yeah so um so this is this one, one very beautiful example comes to my mind and which i always want to share and it's a, it's a it's really a vision in terms of how the world will unravel who knows i at least don't know i know my my problems today and i know my challenges today our challenges as a business today and and uh, but that doesn't stop us from from envisioning what future could be right so um and uh, and somehow the mathematical process that we run and build on is so general that i see the applications going beyond uh, our current use, uh, use case so i always envision this uh, uh, smart agent you know the smart agent is of course we may not have phones uh and we'll have we might have embedded technology but you know i give the example of a ski rental business a ski rental business in a, in one of the of the canadian slopes and uh, and um, i don't know how the how this uh, how what are the dynamics and lo uh, lo 
logistics, but but I can I can assume there are many things going going into it in, into this. You know, the ski ski uh, re, you know resort business is a, is not an easy business, right? It's a it is a, it is getting there in terms of run in a smarter way by pricing and structure, but it needs a lot of intelligence, and it needs to know about weather. It needs to know about uh, about uh, uh, you know about equipment it needs to know about traffic it needs to know about uh, uh, you know about infrastructure it has it you can just think you, uh, you can't even uh, you know can't even imagine there are so many things that are connected to a ski rental business which is uh, which uh, which the latest business week talks about in very much detail uh, about the challenges and how the north american uh, ski businesses are merging uh, uh, to be more viable so so if there are multiple areas where intelligence is needed we need an agent or a smart agent to understand these different domains weather traffic uh, uh, you know uh, 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 like uh, uh, you know uh, you know cost equipment you know so many things parking areas parking places you know how fast they will get filled how to you know manage it and uh, you know risk uh, risk of uh, of uh, uh, you know which comes uh, there are so many ways so uh, an, an agent needs to assimilate it does not need to accumulate information it needs to assimilate and it needs to anticipate intelligence of an agent is about anticipation and we as a society are doing extrapolation we have limited capability of anticipation humans have limited capability you know long term forecasts are dead you know we need to machines need to show that they can anticipate accurately precision precisely they can get into understanding risk in anticipation and and it has to show that they can anticipate in different domains so and then they should show how they can build a portfolio of those domains how they can come to a good judgment a good decision for the manager of the ski rental business now change it to a, a to a sushi business a sushi bar there's so many things to manage you know so i'm just saying that this is where my my final stop is of building the first intelligent smart agent which can sit in your pocket and can help you of course it will it is different than a siri and a different than uh, you know alexa it's not going to be snooping on you because it is uh, going to work in a zero knowledge environment and because it is not going to learn because it you give it so much data it's going to learn from less data it can even guide you without your data how does an intelligence guide you without your data because your data is connected to open data is connected to the web data is connected to weather data is connected to what is already there in intelligence so you don't need to even give it to your data to to have intelligence so this is the vision of building intelligent smart agents you know and that's why alpha block is the market's place and alpha bots are the ones who compete to give you intelligence and it is kind of surprising for me that how how did we ever come up with alpha bet who bets on alpha alpha is about botting alpha bots so this this, this i thought was a good uh, example of explaining what our vision is as a as a business um um i think that's broadly it uh okay if there is if there are more questions i can can address and um and um you and we you can see a lot of information on our website so yes uh, um cool thank you very much for uh, adding this uh, great uh, presentation on this note. So, um, on the last uh, comment uh, that you made, the question is: So, would you say in that case that um, the AI will be actually um, 
uh, taking from the collective consciousness uh, in order to make decision if you're not providing it with your personal data. Yeah, correct. So this actually opens an, another conversation or another presentation or another thought process, which is my new paper on general AI. And uh, the everything is going to get generalized because if you have to build intelligence, it cannot be just specific to my data. I cannot have intelligence, very intelligent, only from my data, right? Intelligence has to learn from so many things. It should, it doesn't even, should not even need my data to to help me, right? Because there's so so much data out there, right? So uh, I don't, uh, our processes or or not just our process, but a general process or a super intelligence, I believe, is not about more data. Super intelligence is about less data. I believe super intelligence is not even about being computationally heavy. It is has to be computationally light. How do we see 30 years from ahead? You know, what data do we have? We have a limited data, right? To we, if you talk about stock markets, uh, maybe three or four markets in the world have 30 year history, right? So we have like so many new markets around the world. They don't barely have 10 year, 14 year history, 15 year history. And there is illiquidity. You know, the more you study markets, you realize that how inefficient the system is, how frail it is, how, you know, how illiquid it is, you know, and, and, you know, you can just vanish. Liquidity can vanish from uh, markets uh, very fast, right? right? You know, so, so I think that intelligence is not going to be a function of, uh, of data content. It's going to be a function of data structure or data context, information structure, information architecture. And this is, is, is uh, really, I hope uh, uh, I will be able to articulate into my general AI paper and I'm looking forward to release it. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a work in progress uh, uh, for the last 18 months. It's, it's just uh, startups take so, so much away your time that you, you cannot really walk the academic path, you know, that easy. Um, so, so I hope I answered your question. So how do you manage alternative as the alternatives asset class across specific protocols that may be proprietary, but still represent components of the portfolio? Okay, that's a very complicated question. I'll I'll try I'll try to answer what I understood. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, the intelligence is uh, domain agnostic, and and what we call as alternative, uh, or what we understand as al alternatives, are one is the al the conventional alternative assets, the private equity and the hedge funds and the and the real estate, and you know these are the conventional legacy world alternatives, and the the alternative asset class that we are building which of course is an extension because if you build something or uh, something alternative and it's investable then it's an alternative asset class like crypto is an alternative asset class so so for us the the process or the technology or the platform is built for extracting intelligence from any data set so whether it is alternative data from a cert certain sector which is selling as alternative data because lot there's now a gold rush for alternative data, right? So for us, we can when we look at data and we're looking at context, we really it ha can stay proprietary because we are not uh, we don't don't have to give away uh, we are not really uh, giving away proprietary data away. It can be a company sponsored. A company says this is my proprietary data. This is my alternative asset. Can you package it? I would like to give, uh, uh, you know, insights into my data uh, to a specific audience. So that is where the, you know, private blockchains come in, or that is where the smart contract is has a certain protocol which is not accessible for the general public, right? It's a, it's still a we're working in a K KYC and uh, you know AML environment. We're not really 
working in a um, in a in an open completely open free world right so 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 for us the it doesn't really matter what what asset what uh, what alternative domain it comes from our capability is to convert that alternative data into a portfolio show that there is a zero intelligence or a base intelligence portfolio and this is the same data set and this is our intelligence above that base intelligence portfolio so and of course this is we are we are allowing for a zero knowledge environment we are allowing for validation we are uh, we are allowing for scrutiny we are showing replicability in our process systematicness on our process so that's where the the transparency comes in terms of showing that yes this is algor uh, this is algorithmic this is uh, uh you know systematic and uh, maybe that uh, you know I, uh, so i hope that answered your question okay thank you um so the next question that i have is how do you plan to integrate a smart agent into a blockchain system how does this differ from a third party oracle interacting with the blockchain uh, uh, these are not my immediate worries uh, because at this point of time we are looking at a version of the smart agent and that version of the smart agent is a portfolio it portfolio as i said has a what to buy selection how much to buy how long to hold and so that's an intelligent agent for us because if it beats the market consistently proves itself over 10 years 5 years 1 year 3 months then we have proved that it's, it's intelligent how, and then intelligent agent comes when it takes S and P 500 data, it takes weather data, it takes personal data, it takes something else, it combines, and then it is not difficult to convert those sensors into decision making voice agent. That's the easy part. The difficult part is to be consistently better than your base intelligence. So, so, so these are not uh, things. I, it will be great philosophical things to discuss. But uh, we are not there yet as a business, so we are just building and populating sensors now. Our job is to build um, a one on financial data, one on cybersecurity data, one on weather data. So we are populating sensors, building one weather agent, one uh, you know S and P 500, one TSX 60, and uh, one on uh, uh, fashion and something. And so we have we're going to come with ten industry boards, ten uh, ten financial boards, and then. Uh, 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 some other, uh, you know, uh, zero knowledge processes. So that's the the idea to come up with 20, 30 bots and educate the our first our B two B users for those those bot processes, and then slowly open it up to uh, uh, to the to the tech community, and from there open it up to uh, to individual u users. You know, you know, of course. Uh, uh, like individual users are going to see it on day one because once we launch the site in a few weeks, you can, uh, 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 like if you're a financial investor, you will un understand what do we have there. So from from a financial use case point of view, it will be not diff you know difficult, and I believe that it will be not not be difficult for other domains also. But again, uh, we are not uh, we don't have a monetization plan for the for the investors as of now. It's it's open information that they'll have access to. That answered the question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. So I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, we still have a few minutes left. Uh, so if uh, guys, if you have uh, more questions, please feel free to to send them over. This is it, uh, this is the time to do it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yes, thank you so much, Mukul, for uh, joining us and for sharing. Uh, with us, uh, the exciting project that you are working with, and uh, your perspective on the tokenization of uh, of tech. Uh, so, if you have uh, for the attendees, if you have uh, uh, any questions, um, any further questions that are not answered here today for Mukul, you can go. Uh, you can uh, contact him at Mukul at alphablock.org and you can also visit his website alphablock.org in addition uh, if uh, you want to have more information 
on our upcoming uh, course on uh, for the Blockchain Hub at York University on crypto economy. Uh, you can go on the blockchainhub.com slash ccant, uh, which I had mentioned at the beginning is spelled C like Charlie, C like Charlie, A like Anna, N like November, and T like time. So ccant, and so you can go on the website uh, to sign up to, to have more information. And the early bird is still on. And, uh, and so you should take advantage of it uh, before it, uh, it uh, expires. And in the past, we've had a lot of very positive feedback uh, for the crypto economy course. So it is very, um, it is obviously uh, quite uh, finance driven. It has a lot of uh, concepts from microeconomy, macroeconomy, uh, game theory, as far as the uh, the crypto, the digital economy is concerned. So, uh, yes, uh, if you are building any product or if you want to learn more about uh, this economy, this will be the course for you. Again, www.theblockchainhub.cc. If you want to learn more about the innovative uh, financier, uh, we are uh, looking for volunteers. Uh, and, uh, and and people to support us in our effort to understand and to share and to anticipate the impact of emerging technologies on the future of finance as far as jobs and businesses and, and the economy is concerned. So if this is an interest of, of yours, you can go on www.theinnovativefinancier.ca www.theinnovativefinancier.ca We also have a podcast that you can listen to on the website, so it might be a uh, time well spent to go on there. Um, and uh, if uh, you are looking for any consulting uh, service, well, you can also reach out to Enough in CA and uh, the the enough in consulting firm, which is my firm, of course. So, uh, on this note, uh, we have uh, many um, exciting events uh, coming up uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, um, so make sure that we you are, you are signed up on our meetup pages, uh, Blockchain Hub and Innovative Frontier. Uh, and during the blockchain week, we have uh, a, a lot of uh, very exciting events planned for you. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, you'll be able to receive all of the all this good information. A uh, very exciting events coming up, um, and um, I believe that uh, that is it. Yes. So uh, next week on Saturday, the, there is a blockchain hackathon. Uh, a blockchain, uh, a legal blockchain hackathon, and that uh, the uh, the blockchain hub is participating in. Some of our instructors are going to be present, judging and mentoring uh, the the uh, attendees, the participants. I myself will be there as well. So if uh, that is uh, an interest of yours, uh, stay tuned as well. We will be sending some more information. Uh, via email, uh, and uh, as usual, you know that uh, we have recorded this uh, this uh, webinar. So as soon as the webinar is uh, edited and ready for distribution, you'll receive the information so you can view it and review it as much as you like. All right. So I think we are going to end with one last question. This is the last question of the day from uh, one of the parties of one of the attendees. So, do you anticipate any juris jurisdictional regulatory challenges? And this question is from Mukul, and this will be the last question of the evening. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be a regulated technology, and uh, we're already opening up conversations locally to be the first. Uh, uh, want to have an exemptive relief for uh, such a performance attribution or validation system, and uh, this will have we'll have to work region by region, regulation by regulation. We're not opening it up directly to all markets. We'll start locally first, and then scale it up to uh, to different other uh, you know jurisdictions. 
Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Mukul. Thank you, everybody, for sticking uh, sticking around and uh, and for uh, listening to this uh, webinar. Uh, we wish you uh, a, a great evening, and we hope uh, you join us in uh, for our next event, whether online or offline. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you.